Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. It's been a little while since my previous video in this series and that is because I was setting up the To Mars and Beyond series so I needed to do some testing over there but we are back and it looks like our pod to do a lunar landing is going to take some time and we'll pass the Mars window so I'm wondering if we can slip in a Mars probe ahead of time. We've got this Mars probe We've also got this lunar lander. I let, let me take a look at that to see if maybe that can get some science or something. But actually, uh, maybe prioritizing Mars and maybe Venus would be a good idea. We could probably get that off before we we'll we are really ready for launching the moon landing mission, the crew moon landing mission. And there are uh, contracts for landing probes on Mars and Venus still, right? Uh, uncrewed Mars landing and uncrewed Venus landing. Now those have pretty hefty failure issues and only a two-year duration so we really only get one shot uh, especially for Mars so yeah we'll uh, let, let's take a look at what probes we can make. Okay so I have this Mars surface probe and we are taking no chances as far as heating is concerned. We have a huge heat shield and I'm no longer putting a procedural tank directly on it. You can see the probe core is attached to the heat shield. And we are in fact using these roundified mod propellant tanks instead of a procedural tank. Because I keep having trouble with the procedural tanks overheating even though they are on the shielded side of the heat shield. So we are doing it this way. It of course has an always open antenna. Um, that may or may not be enough to directly communicate back. So we have relays on the orbital part as usual and we will see whether this works out and altogether it only takes 28 days to build it so hopefully <laughs> hopefully well I mean we're gonna pick up the contracts this time so we better get it done yeah uh, yeah it's about time it's about time we got this done properly maybe this will be the catastrophe that ends our our career this time or maybe it'll work out I don't know but we'll build two of these one as a backup just in case I do something wrong but that will delay the crude mission a bit too so yeah two of those and then uh, maybe a Venus one but we can hold off on that for later since well it's coming up it's still gonna be before we're really done with the crewed mission, so... Well, I guess we'll have to build the Venus one too. Okay, so the Venus surface probe is basically identical to the Mars one, except different parachutes, and also the ablator is full on the heat shield, whereas the Mars one has only partial ablator. So that actually has more delta V, this has less. Even though this has a uh, lighter load because the parachutes are smaller. Let me just double check the parachutes. Uh, I had made this a uh, while ago, uh, shortly after the previous Venus attempt, so I can't even click on the parachutes. Is this a bad thing? <laughs> uh, maybe if I take this off. Let me pull those out a bit. I want to verify them. I mean... Yeah, pre-deployment altitude is low, you see, because we don't want it to take forever to get to the surface. It'll still take forever to get to the surface, but... Okay, so that's how it's going to be. We'll see if that works or not. Okay, the cost is not a big deal. It's really about the timing. Okay, so we now have two Mars surface probes built and one Venus surface probe. We are building the crewed mission for the moon in the top slot and we have the secondary Venus surface probe in the second slot but I, I sort of want to speed that up so that we get it done in 203 days but I want to leave it in the second slot so that we finally get the pod done so I'm going to spend some upgrade points for that we can bump that up to 1.5 now I think let's see is that fast enough uh, not quite. Okay, so now it'll get done in time even in the second slot. So that's good. And before I forget, we will pick up the two contracts. 
Didn't we just have the uncrewed Mars landing available? Why is it gone? What? Uncrewed Deimos, Deimos landing. Is that the one available? I mean, uh, what? Why? Why? Why did the uncrewed Mars landing go away? I don't understand why we no longer can do this one. You may only have two offered active landing contracts at the same time. Okay, but you offered me that other one before. Anyway, let's take the Venus landing one before we miss out on that. Maybe after 109 days we'll get the Mars contract again? What if we decline this one? I really don't want to decline it, but... He made an interesting sound there. Uh, no, it's not letting me get rid of it. Okay, well, I don't know what we're going to do about the Mars surface. We can still send it. I mean, of course, without a contract. Let's see if the Mars one pops up now. Oh, good. It's giving me the uncrewed Mars landing contract. Okay. So now we've got the correct two. I don't know. Just randomly gives me a Deimos landing. Okay, we've picked up the correct two. We're 20 days to the Mars window. We can probably get started now for the first attempt. Okay, it is going to be a daytime launch. I'm lining up with the moon per usual. Just for simplicity's sake. And SAS on, throttle is up. Ignition of the three SC2060 engines and launch. And that's a lot of vigor. That is a lot of vigor. Let's make sure to direct that vigor in the correct direction. Two G's. Gotta watch out on the yaw actuator. But it seems like we're through max Q and everything. Okay, booster set. Oh, and fairing set. <laughs> Might not have wanted all that to happen at the same time there. We'll stop the roll once we get the RCS on this stage. Okay, engine 2 vacuum time. There we go, the RCS doing its thing. Okay, and shut down. 277 by 237. Or round up to 238 and 278. But anyway, 1,129 meters per second left here to start our burn for Mars. And let's see how that shapes up. I mean, we I still haven't put Transfer Window Planner in here, even though I'd normally think of it as essential. But uh, we'll see what we get without it. So, mech jab, maneuver planner, the ASAP, create node, 4,000. Uh, it takes a long time to get there, though. Um, when is the contract up? Uh, 624 days, so it's still in time or in, in everything. But it's certainly not ideal. Let me take a look at that pork chop plot again. It looks like if we waited a little bit longer, we could probably get it for less. But we're certainly going right now with this because it's got the liquid oxygen boiling off, so it's not worthwhile to wait. Okay, so we'll just, you know, take our time. All right, solar panels. I think action group two is the science. Yeah. Nice big solar panels for Mars. Might as well make sure that the probe core... This one doesn't have a hibernate mode because it's just a payload adapter. It's actually the rocket's control core. So it doesn't do that. But this probe core has a hibernate function. Let me just make sure if we can ever reach it because of the stupid dish collider getting in the way. Okay, hibernating warp auto. Yeah, I certainly need to make better calm dishes. We can only let go of this probe at the last minute though. It doesn't have much power. 
Oh, you know, I might want to bring in the... We need to put more power on this thing. Yeah, we might want to bring in the backup. I feel like... Uh, here we're we're just gonna be running on batteries, but it's got six thousand six hundred, which should be enough to transmit some stuff. But I think the relay might need some batteries. We are just gonna leave it behind and everything, but in theory, it would still work as a relay. And of course, it does have the solar panels and everything. Okay, next. And... go. Okay, that's wandering off there. Let's see. Well, timing's a bit off. There's that target orbit for that satellite, but we're not trying for that right now. Okay, so we'll do a mid-course adjustment. That will be very easy to do. We've got 1,200 meters per second. So, the orbiter can certainly get into... Well, I don't know about certainly... It'd probably get into orbit. <laughs> probably get into orbit. It's fine if it flies by but remains in communication, but... There's probably other satellites that can help with communication as well. Okay. Well, I don't know what the lighting conditions are going to be when we get over there. So... Otherwise, I would try to get over to the daytime side. Maybe this will be the daytime side when we get there. Ah, uh, it's too touchy. We'll fix it once we do the mid-course adjustment. Let me just add that alarm. And so we have a small adjustment to make when the time comes. This will be recharging. But we should face the sun properly. Easily recharging. Okay. So, with that done, let's get the second one underway, but before I do, I'm going to slap some batteries onto the relay stage. Launching the first Mars Surface Probe mission early means that we have some time to make adjustments to this one. Uh, I think the CubeSat battery might be sufficient. I haven't even unlocked these other ones. Let me see. That's 880. But it contains a lot more charge than the CubeSat battery. But it'll probably hurt our Delta V. It's really heavy. 0.35 tons, so we can't have that. The, uh, I mean, I, I like the lightness of the CubeSat battery, which is in fact based on a real battery, by the way. Uh, see, it's a double side battery bank with 44.4 watt hours. That's uh, 12 amp hours, basically, in 8 cells. I guess that's the right way around. Okay. So we've got eight of those, which will provide extra electric charge. That'll be better. Okay, here we go for the second launch, but it's sure wiggling around a lot. Um, yeah. Okay, I did some time warping, and when it came out of time warp, it decided to go like this. So I don't know. Uh, let let's ignite. Let's go, please. Launch. Okay. Please be okay. <laughs> uh, maybe it was launch clamps or something, hopefully. This time, let's not have the fairings at exactly the same time as the booster set. Okay, and... Booster separation. Very vigorous. Still gives us this roll. Okay, first stage separation, second stage ignition, and fairing set, and fairing set. <laughs> and we'll get those little antennae ready. The tough thing is, even though we're sending a backup, of course, if there's something fundamentally wrong with the first one, we are not changing that with the second one. It's just if uh, some there's some operations error, like I accidentally... Uh, lose electric charge with one, then we've got the backup, but, you know, if there's something essential wrong with the first one, that's not going to be solved by this. Okay, making orbit here. I think I got a little bit better. We'll see. 
Okay, uh, tighter orbit, 194 by 179. We've got 1,346 left in this stage right now. So that is better than the previous time, even though we're technically carrying extra little batteries, though those aren't very heavy. Okay, so once again plotting for Mars, but I'll just accept the Mechjeb solution to this. Even though I knew that we could get a better Delta V deal by waiting a little bit longer, I decided not to, just in case we had an engine failure on a real engine failure on the pad or something that need needed to be replaced or something. So launching earlier seemed better. Okay, and ignition. And separation. And ignition. Let's see how this goes. Oh, it's wandering pretty early. Okay, well, definitely wandered off. Let's see if we're short. Uh, looks like, yeah. Okay, and just like with the other one, we'll need a mid-course adjustment, because that's definitely inclination. And it's arriving in more than a year. But it should still be in time for the contract, so that's all we really care about. Really, we need to worry about comms more than light. We'll probably make an adjustment once we get there. We have, we have plenty of Delta V for that. Okay, that'll do for now. So, this one is also on its way. And we'll make sure it's facing the sun properly. And that means that, well, we actually have to do the mid-course adjustments before we do the Venus window. So we will go to tracking station to time warp, but we'll otherwise be following them to that point. Okay, so we are approaching the mid-course adjustment for the probes, but I noticed that Jupiter-1 sort of has a line back here, and I want to pop on over to it to see how it's doing. We've got a Jupiter encounter in a year, but does this mean that when Earth is on the same side, there might be hope? I don't know. I mean, it's still a distance away from Jupiter, so let me just take a look at it. Well, it has something. 8%. I don't know if that's good enough or not, but we might want to keep an eye on it. It's got electric charge right now. Let me see its situation. Well, that would be within the parameters, right? We did set it there. We'll see. I don't know. that We've got the alarm there. 8%. Will depend on the timing. Okay, turning for the mid-course adjustment. I don't think we need the main engine. Let's see. Yeah, RCS will be fine. Uh, that's fine for now. We'll probably adjust it when we get there based on communication. And as we turn to face the sun, uh, it completely changes our orientation too. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and back. Right, okay. But we are pointing at the sun now and recharging just fine. So this one's set. And we will get a SOI change alarm for 302 days, so it'll be a while. And let's hop on over to the other Mars surface probe. Communication is fine with these, by the way. Signal strength 89% right now. And all right, cue the adjustment burn. Okay, okay, let's just kill rotation. Well, we're currently hitting Mars. Uh, let's just turn towards the sun and see what happens. Well, again, we'll just fix it when we get there. We've got plenty of Delta V for that purpose. So, and... Alright, so that's ready to go. SAS on. Yep. SAS on. And really, we should have relative rotation sun. Okay. 
So now we can launch the Venus ones, which are perhaps more fraught than the Mars ones. Mars is not so deadly, right? Venus, on the other hand, quite deadly. So let's see. Okay, here we are for the Venus launch, and this one is a nighttime launch because we have progressed a few months, and that's how everything has lined up. So SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And off we go. Sorry, we're uh, launching four of the same rocket, but, you know, it's simpler that way and, you know, realistic and everything. It's actually fairly small rockets, like a under 100 tons on the pad. Which, of course, is good for the whole build time. I mean... These are methane, ox uh, methane oxygen engines, but functionally it is like if you strap three Falcon 1 cores together. Okay, booster set. Okay, separation and ignition of the second stage and fairing set. Fairing set. Okay, and the antennae we've got. Everything looking good so far. Okay, here we are making orbit. Uh, keep in mind that the probe is heavier this time because we've got more of later on the heat shield. Anyway, shut down 247 by 241. And we certainly should have enough to get ourselves over to Venus. Yep. Uh, 141 days only, by the way, for the trip, so that's good. Let's get the solar panels out. Okay, and ignition. Okay, and separation and ignition. Okay, nope, not not Mars this time. Yep, gotta get our planets right here. And that's, oh, it's coming in there. Okay, so we've got to make course adjustment here. That'll get us closer, but maybe we want to be on the opposite side. I don't know, but closer is still better. Okay, so just 15 meters per second, and we'll add that alarm. All right, let's orient this. Oh, this seems pretty good already. Yep, that's fine. Let's just keep that off, SAS on, and make sure it's constantly pointing at the sun, and we will launch the other one. Okay, last one finally, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Will any of them work? Well... On the bright side, our investment wasn't too high. On the downside, the penalty for failing the contracts is high, very high. So we'll have to see. If you're doing RP2000, feel free to turn down the, the penalty slider in the settings. Yeah, that might be a little bit too much. But that's up to, that's up to the player. And booster set. And the roll. The usual roll. Probably one of the little separatrons is offset or something, I don't know. Okay, separation and ignition on the second stage. RCS on, fairings off. Fairings off. And a little antennae out. Okay, and shut down 265 by 224 or 266 by 224. About the same as we had on Delta V left the previous launch. And we will make our way to Venus. Yeah, I would have liked to have a firm success under my belt before picking up the contract. But seems like that was too much to ask for. Okay, and ignition. 
and separation and ignition. Everything has worked fairly well today as far as the engines are concerned, which makes me a little bit worried about how it's going to go when we get there, but we always have the RCS thruster backup, so it's probably not going to be too bad. And I, oh, there it is. Just wondering where that was. Okay, well, another mid-course adjustment. All right, so that alarm can be added. This probe can be reoriented for sunlight. And we have four probes on their way, four landers, and we will see whether they work or not in the next video. So I'll do the maneuver nodes for the two Venus ones in the next video, and then we'll have the Venus ones arriving first, actually, and then the Mars ones. But somewhere before the Mars ones, I mean, we've got, we're gonna have the moon mission. Maybe we'll do the moon mission first. Uh, so we'll do the two maneuver nodes for the Venus probes and then do the crewed lunar landing mission and then catch up with the Venus and Mars probes. I'll think about that. Maybe I'll, uh, yeah, I mean, we want to, you know, I mean, we're at 2024 already. We really need to tighten things up here. So yeah, I guess maybe we'll do it that way so that we finally get people landing on the moon. I mean, 2024 already. So yeah, I'll probably go that way. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.